When we first drove the Haval Jolyon, we walked away quite impressed. The vehicle looked great, it also offered many great features and it was priced perfectly. But there was one complaint that we had about the car and that was fuel economy. Seemingly, that is going to change with the introduction of this, the Haval Jolyon HEV. So, is this new HEV all that it's cut out to be? Let's find out. On the outside, the Jolyon HEV looks very similar to the other models with subtle differences here and there. The most noticeable difference is up front, as we see we've got these diamond accents on the front grille. We've also got blue trimming on the headlights and we've got an all new LED cluster. But if you really want people to see that you've got the HEV Jolyon, all you need to do is this. Haval 1, Audi 0. <laughs> When we were kids, they would say silence is golden. Now as adults, silence is economical. And that is exactly the case with this Haval Jolyon HEV. In fact, I can drive up to 100 kilometers an hour on full EV mode in this car. With this new power plant that they've put in the vehicle, you can now do a claimed consumption figure of five liters per 100 kilometers, which is very good indeed. We're currently averaging 6.8 liters per 100 kilometers which is not exactly five liters, but we have been a little bit heavy on the right pedal, but I'm sure if you drove this car gently, you should get it to the low six and perhaps even the high fives because you don't really get what the claimed economy figures are. So what is under the hood of this Haval Jolyon HEV? I've got a 1.5 liter normally aspirated engine made it to a battery pack giving us a combined power output of 140 kilowatts and 375 newton meters. In fact, this vehicle feels quite punchy even up here in the reef, even though it's got a normally aspirated engine, because of the electrification, there's a sense of eagerness that this car has and it's quite a pleasure to drive and things such as overtaking aren't a problem. Similarly to what you'd find in a full EV, a hybrid system works better in the city where you can use the energy brake regeneration and all the features that makes it a bit more economical. So it's kind of weird because you have to do the opposites to what you would normally do in a conventional engine. Where a conventional engine loves highways, hybrid technology loves small little roads and places where you can actually regenerate as much energy as possible. Speaking of which, I've got a nifty mode in this vehicle which allows me to use one pedal technology, so to speak. It's not as sophisticated as you'd get in other premium brands, but you definitely can feel that it's working, but sometimes it can catch you off guard when you lift off, the car feels quite front brake heavy. Much like the first time when I drove a Jolyon, I'm very impressed by just the quality of this cabin. It's quiet inside here, the seats are comfortable, and that is why the Jolyon works in South Africa, is that consumers want all this stuff, but at the right price, and this car really knows how to tick those boxes. Again, Haval, you've really managed to impress us. Just by looking at the roads, you can see that the Haval Jolyon has stolen the hearts of many South Africans. Now with this introduction of this HEV, this should further bolster the sales of this vehicle. Coming in at 549,000 Rand, the deal even gets sweeter. Honestly, it's very difficult to find something not to like about the Jolyon. watching Ignition GT. Welcome back. 
With modern upmarket styling, a classy cabin, and a highly efficient powertrain, the Haval Jolion Hybrid represents a tantalizing value proposition. But would our guests add it to their compact SUV shopping lists? Gents? Mm. I think Haval has done an extremely great job with this car. Um, pricing is really on point. Mm. As we know, Havals are very generously spit. Mm. Um, they've got great value for money. And adding that with the option to have a hybrid car in South Africa makes just a lot of sense. Yeah. I think Haval's going to sell a lot of these. And what did you guys think of the actual vehicle itself? Obviously, there's minor updates here and there. You know, when we drove the vehicle, obviously, I noticed the styling changes. Did you guys walk away as impressed as when you first experienced the Jolly on? Yeah, I think the cars do come, you know, spec at the factory very well. So a lot of luxury. But I think what's missing here is there's a big criticism of fuel consumption. Mm. And that's always been an attack on most of the Chinese brands. And I think they've addressed this very well, especially considering that the normal uh, Jolion or Jolion, as the Aussies like to call it. <laughs> uh, so however you want to pronounce yeah. it. Yeah. You've got a turbo car and then you've got the hybrid, which isn't a turbo car. Yes. So you would then expect, okay, maybe the consumption differences will be quite you know, vast, but you'll find that in the hybrid, the consumption is absolutely phenomenal. And it addresses the issue of, I can buy a good quality car, mm. but then I'm sacrificing paying out my wallet for yeah. fuel. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking about that now, the rivals, do you think that this car, where, where would it stack up in terms of the hybrids that we've currently got available in our country? Do you guys put it at the top? At the yeah, middle? I would definitely think? put it at the top. I mean, if you look at Corolla Cross Hybrid, it's mm. only got a 90 kilowatt motor, whereas this has got 140 kilowatts. Mm. So it's got a lot more power and a lot more efficiency. Look, if I can add, if anything, Haval as a brand has shown us just how possible it is to throw everything that you can think of in a car without sort of hurting your pocket. Mm. I mean, they come with some of the most spec cars, um, some of the most spec um, options in cars that other German cars don't even have, yeah. Yeah. which is yeah. quite phenomenal. Yeah, and that is very true. And I think for me, what I'm happy about is that our car market, we always need disruptors. Mm. It's like in any industry, things can't always stay the same, things need to change. And I like the fact that we've got Haval, we've got Cherry, we've got Bike now, that is really shaking things up.